A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I start in the name of Allah the Beneficent and the Merciful I seek salvation from Shaitan the Accursed My dearest brothers and sisters viewers from all across the world Assalamu Alaikum Jami'an wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh May the peace, blessings and protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you at all times I would like to remind you to join us on social media, on Twitter using the hashtag IHTVRamadan, on Facebook, Instagram and on YouTube inshallah where this show will be uploaded tomorrow. I want to start the show by using a quote, a saying from Amir al-Mu'mineen salam where he says, the person who does not follow their desires will be free. This is so important because in this world that we live in, we're born to be free yet we're shackled down by our own lusts and desires our own worldly materialistic wants. Inshallah, if we can shackle ourselves, or if we can free the shackles of these chains, we can prosper in life. Inshallah, in today's episode for spiritual refinement, I want to talk about a specific thing which is very close to my heart. And inshallah, I hope that by listening to this, I hope that you get inspired and that you can also pay special heed to this specific topic, and that is service to the Ahlul Bayt. The things I want to talk about is number one, the sacrifices the Ahlul Bayt have given for us and why service is important to them. Number two, ways in which we can serve and number three for those who serve how to behave intentions humility and also how to reflect the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt through your own actions firstly with the service of the Ahlul Bayt when we look at the history of the Aimmat al-Tahirin we see that throughout their lives they've always been thinking of us they've been sacrificing not only for the religion of Islam but for the Shia, but also for humanity as a whole, for people, for society as a whole. It is said that without the sacrifices, especially when we look at Karbala and the day of Ashura, without the sacrifices that the Imams have given for us, the very fabric of social being, the very fabric of morals and ethics, the foundation of principles and good values would not exist. The foundations of humanity would not exist. So the Imams have sacrificed everything for our freedom. But the beauty of our society, the beauty of our community rather, and the Shia community is that we sacrifice everything we have back for them. And that is the reason why we've been sent on this planet. I firmly believe that as a community, we are specifically born to serve the Ahlul Bayt. And inshallah, I'll talk about ways in which we can serve later on in this segment. When we talk about service, Firstly, the most important thing is intention. It is important that as an individual, when you're born and when you're brought up, your parents tell you about the Ahlul Bayt. And when you have such a strong connection to them, their life becomes your life. When you wake up, you think about them. As you go through the day, you think about them. When you sleep, you think about them. Your intentions, your love, your heart, your soul, your goals become them. And when you get to that stage, Service is an inevitability, not a chore. And as a result, when you're serving them, you don't think about other people and what they think of you. You don't think about what other people are doing to serve. You serve in your own way. I just want to remind you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed every single one of us with a specific potential. He's given us His mercy. He's given us special strengths. He has given us weaknesses as well. But the reason for that is that he wants you to live up to your strengths and to build on your potential. Every human being is different. Some human beings have strengths in specific areas. We see that service of the Ahlul Bayt doesn't just exist in one particular form. You today, you're watching this TV channel. The work that goes behind producing this show is 
unbelievable, it's uncomprehendable, it's unfathomable. When I look around, I see so many different people doing so many different jobs and all of them have one goal, one aim in mind. And that's the sincerity and the love for the Ahlul Bayt Now, when we talk about service, we talk about things like people who have specific qualities in specific areas. When I look at the people around me today and I see the people that are making the show, the people who are very good in editing, very good with computers and their job is to edit. People who are very talented as cameramen and as photographers, their job is to take the cameras, uh, sorry, to take the, the footage. I, because I can present, I've been sitting here presenting the show and that's my service. However, there's people who do things like make the tea, people who, who are there to comfort you, to bring you things like food. Even their service is accepted by the Ahlul Bayt because they're doing their bit as much as they can for this service and for the spreading of the message and the mission of Islam. Similarly, when we go into the centers, the Husayniyas, the Imam Bargas, we look at people how, and how they do their service in different ways. We look at people as we enter the mosque who, who maybe hold the door open for us. Don't forget this is a service for the Ahlul Bayt as well. To give comfort to the servants and to the lovers of the Ahlul Bayt is a service in itself. We see people who pile the shoes and stack the shoes on the shelves, that service. We see people who hoover the floors, that service. We see people who hand out the, the drinks, the water, the tea, that service. We see people who climb on the pulpit and deliver the majalis, that service. We see the radud who perform and who, who uh, recite the latmiyads or who recite the nasheed, that is service. We see the community members, the committee members, the presidents of the centers, the people that try and make sure that the center runs financially, that make sure the center runs economically and viably, that they make sure that the lights are on, they make sure that there's heating in the centers, their servants. Every single one of these people is playing their role based on their strengths, based on what they can do. So as a servant, there's a few things that you have to be aware of, which I'll come on to in a bit. But one thing to remember is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a specific goal in life and because of that goal he's given you a potential. Now because he's given you that, it is up to you to live up to that potential. That potential includes serving the Ahlul Bayt. If you don't live up to this potential that Allah has given you as a mercy, don't forget that you're answerable on the day of judgment for that. Because wastage of time and opportunity is also, we say asraf when we talk about food, but it's also another form of wastage. And you're answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Next, I want to go on to the mindset, the intentions of the servants of the Ahlul Bayt. As a reciter myself, and someone who also does other things to try and serve the Ahlul Bayt, um, as a doctor, I try and um, help people who are going on ziyara, for example, help with charities. I'm often, for some reason, um, given a lot of praise, and I do not feel myself praiseworthy at all. And Generally, I feel that's the mindset that we should be in because we've been given specific roles in life. We've been given special strengths as a result of the roles we've been assigned. And each one of us should try and live up to those roles. Just because you're in the public eye, for example, you're a reciter or you recite majalis, doesn't make you any more superior than the next person. It just means that you're doing your bit of service. The person who stacks the shoes in the mosques is just as valuable as you are as a reciter, as, a, as someone who recites majlis. The person who's behind the scenes and fixes the sound so that you can have your voice heard is just as important as you are. And as a president, if you find yourself thinking that you're more superior than the rest of your community members, surely you should not have this mindset. The people that hoover the floors in the mosque, that make that mosque somewhere where people want to come into, are just as valuable as you are. Have a mindset which makes you humble, a mindset which makes you um, feel your value. Your value is, number one, you are valuable because you're serving the Ahlul Bayt, but number two, you're serving them because you've been given that goal. I also want to talk a little bit about um, the specific ways in which we can serve, inshallah, in a bit. Therefore, as I've said before, service can exist in many facets in many different ways. And as human beings, as the servants of the Ahlul Bayt, as the Shia, our job is to endeavor to try and meet our goals, meet our uh, potential. We should always have aspirations and ambitions to try and serve the best we can, but at the same time be humble. 
The way we do that is by constantly remembering the sacrifice of the Ahlul Bayt for us. Through their sacrifice, they haven't asked us to cry for them and mourn for them. Through their sacrifice, they've given us the gift of freedom. And that gift of freedom, we should try and express in the way we do our day-to-day -day activities and run our day-to-day -day lives. And through that freedom, we should try and serve them. In our daily lives, we should not try and get chained down by the day-to-day -day rigmaroles and the day-to-day -day rigors of life. Because having lures to, towards materialistic things, following the worldly path, chains us down. This gift of freedom that we have from the Ahlul Bayt becomes nothing anymore when you're chained down by the worldly needs and worldly desires. So that's the first thing. Remember the Ahlul Bayt very clearly and constantly. Remember the sacrifices for you. Number two, do not get lured by the worldly demands or worldly desires that you have because they, they act as a distraction. Number three, always have the sincerity in your mind. Always remember that as a servant of the Ahlul Bayt, no matter what you do, you're only fulfilling your potential. You're nothing but a mere servant, whether you're a reciter or someone who recites majalis, whether you're someone who, di uh, who dishes out the food or serves the tea or gives the water or someone who stacks the shoes or just holds the door open. You're doing your service. Never forget that. Never become proud. Never show arrogance. Always show humility. And inshallah, if we do that, we can become better servants of the Ahlul Bayt and we can become better human beings. And therefore, as a society, we can improve ourselves and perfect ourselves ready for the reappearance of our awaited Imam alayhi salam. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his progeny, has said, Surely the month of Ramadan is a great month. Allah multiplies in it the good deeds and erases in it the sins and elevates in it the ranks. episodes as we go from place to place around the world we experience the ways that different people from different backgrounds from different parts of the world prepare for the month of Ramadan inshallah today I want to take a trip to the Big Apple it's known as a city that never sleeps it's New York City which is located on the east coast of the United States of America now New York City is one of the largest cities in the USA as well as being a very big metropolitan city there is also a large Muslim population there a Muslim population that comes from several different backgrounds you get the African population there is the Indo-Pakistani population the Iraqi population the Iranian population and all of these different types of populations these different races have their own centers obviously as the USA is not a Muslim country the um, holidays and the working life doesn't really change that much so people still have to go to work, they still have to go to school and carry out their day-to-day -day activities as usual however the way that it differs from the rest of the year is that the people in New York City based on the different backgrounds and different cultural t traditions they go to the mosques in their own centers on a daily basis so they try to go to the mosques for the evenings for the iftar time they stay in the mosques, they have the iftar there and usually they'd have some maj majlis or majalis after which they'd have the dua and the a'mal if it's the a'mal nights obviously as the New York City is one of the biggest and one of the most beautiful metropolitan cities in the world you have places like Manhattan where there is fantastic things to see and fantastic things to do good places to eat the people of New York City tend to try and go out during the evenings to experience the city to try and take, make use of the city and then after that they come back home for their suhoor and get ready for another day of fasting. Inshallah we hope that you can also send in your videos, your clips, your pictures, your blogs about how you prepare your day-to-day -day lives for the month of Ramadan, how you prepare work, how you prepare yourself for iftar, how you prepare yourself for the mosque. And inshallah we hope to air these so that the rest of the world can see exactly what 
you do to prepare for this month and how people are diverse but all prepare for one cause, one goal and that is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Dearest Imam Hussain TV viewers Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May peace and blessings of Allah be upon each and every one of you Today we came to another marketplace in the holy city of Karbala to report to you the atmosphere of the holy city of Karbala Stay tuned as we go and interview a few of the brothers here in the holy city of Karbala Brothers and sisters, I have one of the brothers here. I will ask him a few questions. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Can you tell us about the Ramadan in Medina of Karbala? My name is Hassan Yarraza, from the city of Karbala. I love the people of the Iraqi and the Islamic community and the people of the Islamic community. May Allah be able to do it in the peace and the peace. الأجواء الرمضانية خصوصا محافظة كربلاء ومحافظات المقدسة عامة الحمد لله أنه أجواء روحانية من أدعية وزيارات ودائما الوافدين المحافظة خصوصا ليالي الجمعة يعني يوم الخميس عندنا دائما تكثر الزوار يكثرون دائما عندنا وهواي يجونا والحمد لله أجواء روحانية كلش جميلة والحمد لله وخصوصا إن شاء الله مقبلة علينا ليالي القدر تكون أكثر ازدحام وخصوصا محافظة كربلاء ومحافظة النجف اللي هي بها ذكرى استشهاد الإمام علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام أمير المؤمنين. Brother Mohsen is congratulating you and the Islamic Ummah on the arrival of the holy month of Ramadan and he is saying that the atmosphere in the holy city of Karbala and especially during the holy month of Ramadan is so special it is full of spirituality and we have visitors from different countries as well as different provinces in Iraq and especially on the weekends. Uh, the weekends, uh, we have more visitors can come uh, from other provinces of Iraq to the holy city of Karbala. And the city of Karbala is full of spirituality and all the visitors are, are busy with visiting the holy shrines of Imam al Hussein and uh, his brother Abel Fadl al-Abbas and especially that we are coming close to the Knights of Al-Qadr and uh, the, the martyrdom of Imam Ali alayhi salam. ممكن تتفضلنا عن طبيعة عملكم خلال شهر رمضان المبارك؟ طبعا طبيعة العمل أيام شهر رمضان أول عشر أيام أو 15 يوم يكون طبعا الشغل أقل يعني فترة بداية رمضان والناس ما تطلع قليل خصوصا بعد الفطور لأن الصبح الجو كلش حار يكون والعصر نفس الشيء فترة إعداد فطور أو فشي وراها ورا الفطور يعني الناس تبدي تطلع للزيارة وتتبضع نفس الحالة يعني الأسواق على العموم الأسعار أغلى تصعد شوية برمضان يعني دائما كمنتجات غذائية أكثر أكثر ما تكون بضاع مثلا ملابس أو ملابس غير شيء يعني هذه طبيعة الأجواء يعني العمل اللي هي تكون بشهر رمضان هالشكل uh, I asked the brother about uh, their job and what they, they do and how, whether uh, it is uh, been affected by the holy month of Ramadan or not. He's saying that uh, the first decade of the holy month of Ramadan, since people uh, don't come out of their houses and the weather is too hot, especially during the day, uh, we don't have much visitors. But the second and the last decade of the holy month of Ramadan, we have so many visitors coming to the holy city of Karbala. Uh, so uh, we can see that uh, so many visitors come to, the, to do the ziyara and after the ziyara they come to these marketplaces to buy souvenirs and buy clothes for the Eid uh, and especially when we get closer to the days of the Eid.
today's episode, as we go through the stages of life, inshallah in this episode of the health tips and medical advice, I want to talk about old age and the elderly within our communities. I want to talk about, number one, the um, problems associated with old age. Number two, the medical conditions associated with old age. Number three, what we can do as a community for the elderly within our communities. One of the biggest problems with old age is frailty and that's caused by degeneration of the human body over time. So if you can imagine that the hearts and the lungs aren't what they once used to be, the joints, the muscles, take due to the test of time, degenerate. And I've talked about arthritis in previous episode, I will be talking about it in a future episode. And as a result, these joint problems and muscle problems make the old people they find them difficult to walk, and elderly find it difficult to walk rather, and they find it difficult to walk long distances and they get tired very quickly. So it's important to understand that. And also with the elderly people, as you can imagine, the longer you live, the more likely it is that you'll develop medical problems. So they have a lot of other complex medical issues associated with their old age. So it's important to appreciate that as a community and as a society, and also try and accommodate for that, give them support and help when they need it. Talking about the elderly, conditions that are more prevalent and illnesses that are more prevalent in, in older age are things like dementia. Dementia I've talked about in a previous episode, but I think it's important as a community that we appreciate the effects of dementia and acknowledge that it's a condition that is getting more and more prevalent within our communities. Inshallah, when we do that, we can then start to address it. Secondly, one of the conditions that affects the brain is something called Parkinson's disease. It's a condition which is caused by damage to or degeneration of a part of the brain called the basal ganglia. And this affects things like movement. People with Parkinson's typically get symptoms like tremors, they get rigidity of their muscles, and they get slowing of the movements or the initiation of movements. They find problems moving and walking. They find problems writing. And if you notice all of these, then it's important that you see your GP because people who suffer from these can be treated with medication. And with medication, obviously, their symptoms can subside. Other problems affect, affecting the elderly are things like visual problems, things like macular degeneration or cataracts, and hearing problems. As degeneration happens with the ears, they get poorer hearing. Obviously, with people who suffer from these problems, it's important to see eye specialists or opticians, and also it's important to see people who are specialists with hearing. You can get treated f with surgery for cataracts, for example, and treatment with hearing aids for hearing problems, for example. Thereafter, there are problems with the rest of the body, so the main organs of the body, things like the heart and the kidneys and the lungs. And if you suffer from degeneration of these and worsening of these in terms of their function, you can see a doctor, and the doctor will keep an eye on you, do regular checkups, maybe once every six months, maybe once every year, and give you medication to try and help with these ailments of the body. Finally, cancers are more prevalent in elder, elderly people. Reason being is that in the elderly, as time de goes on and the body degenerates, the cells of the body also degenerate, and they're more prone to getting cancerous. So things like prostate cancer in men, um, lung cancer, thyroid cancers, and um, bowel cancers are more prevalent in the elderly population. And therefore, it's important to look out for the signs and the symptoms which may lead you or indicate that there is a problem going on. So the symptoms include things like weight loss, very large amounts of weight loss over a short period of time, uh, things like loss of appetite, problems with uh, colors, uh, color of the skin, so if someone's looking very pale and feeling tired all the time, if you're getting all these symptoms, and especially with bowel cancers, if you find that you find blood in your stools, or in lung cancer, if you find that you find blood in your mucus when you're coughing up, it's important to get these seen and see a doctor as soon as possible because even though the elderly population may be very frail and they have these problems, it's not to say that they can't have an operation or they can't get these problems treated. So the quicker you see them, the quicker you act on them, and the, and the quicker that you um, treat them, the better the prognosis is in the long term. Finally, I just want to talk about what we can do as a community to try and help the elderly. And also, by helping the elderly, we're helping ourselves. So things like, number one, as a community, I feel that because of the elderly within our population and those with mobility problems, I think within our mosques and Husseiniyas, within our centers, we should have mobility aids there as, as um, there just in case, as a course of precaution, in case there's someone who's old who doesn't have their walking stick with them 
or someone who's old and they're finding it difficult to mobilize through, uh, around the mosque, for example. It's important to have some walking sticks and some frames there just in case. Secondly, I feel that as a community we need to acknowledge the problems associated with old age. And I think we should try and have seminars and education sessions so we can educate the members of our community regarding those who are elderly and what we can do to help them. Thirdly, I think one of the most important things for elderly people is social interaction. If you imagine a lot of them are past retirement age, so they sit at home whilst the rest of the family maybe go to work or go to school and they don't have people they can talk to. So as a community, I think we should introduce um, sessions or um, gatherings for the elderly. I know in some communities they have something called senior citizens meetings where the elderly get together. In these meetings they can have social interaction, develop their interests with each other and thirdly if there's any problems that they have they can discuss it and problems can be flagged up very quickly. Fourth and lastly I want to just encourage members of our community, the young, the middle-aged, to go and visit care homes, to visit nursing homes, to help the elderly in society, not only the Muslims but also the non-Muslims. That way we appreciate, number one, the problems associated with old age. Number two, we give them social interaction, something that the elderly actually crave. Number three, it's not only good for them, but it's good for us as well. They have such a wealth of knowledge, such experience that they can give us advice as well. And number five, I think with the elderly, if we look after them as we age, and our youngsters also help to look after them, as we age as a population, the youths will start looking after us. They'll have the values and the appreciation for the elderly within their hearts. If you just ignore the elderly and pretend they don't exist in society, when we get to that stage, the same will happen to us. So it's important to try and build that. It forms the basic fabric of society. Inshallah, I hope that these pointers have been useful for you. Inshallah, I hope that as a community we can strive to appreciate the elderly more and to help them and by helping them, we're helping ourselves. Helping the elderly and giving them appreciation, value in society forms the moral fabric of society. And I've said, as I've said before, if you can help the elderly improve their self-confidence and self-esteem, allow them to impart their wisdom, impart their experience to you, you can learn so much. And as a community, we can build the foundations for the evolution and for the improvement of our own communities, inshallah, I hope that our communities can grow from strength to strength and the youth of our community can become the flag bearers of the religion of Islam and also become the soldiers for the awaited Imam alayhi salam. Once a maid of our second Imam Al Hassan, peace be upon him, dropped a hot bowl of soup on Al Hassan. She was very scared because she thought that Al Hassan would be angry and punish her. She immediately re recited the ayah, Those who control their anger. Imam Al Hassan, peace be upon him, smiled and replied, He said that I am not angry. Then she, re then she recited the second part of the ayah and said, And are forgiving towards those people. Allah, Imam Al Hassan, peace be upon him, said, I forgive you. Then she finished the ayah by saying, Allah loves those who do good deeds. Imam al Hassan told her that you are free. The above ayah is from, uh, is from the chapter, it's from the third chapter of the Quran, Surah Al Imran, verse 134. The moral of the story is that the Quran is not there, is not only there for us to read, but to also ponder upon and learn from the stories and from the morals within the Quran. Inshallah, in tonight's episode, I want to remember that individual, that personality, who is known as the door to supplication, Babu al Hawaij, and that's Abul Fadl alayhi salam. Inshallah, if we ask on these nights through his wasila, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely grant our wishes. This is a, a, a poetry that was written by myself and my brother Abbas, and inshallah, it helps us to remember the 
the qualities and the standing and the status of Abul Fadl. Ustadina barda maidan Bar jism-e hame alam jaan Bar takht daliri sultan Kiye 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 abbasi Az baad-e mardi sirab Kursi kamare alam taab Ganji nai ishq naya Kiye 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 abbasi Masnad e dilavari ro sahib pe Saf shikhan e lashkar e mahar pe Jang avari bhi harif as chang ki hu Pure Ali ibn Abi Talib Pure Ali ibn Abi Talib Mawla, 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 Mawla Abal Fas Mawla, 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 Mawla Abal Fas The mirror image of Haydar The meaning of honor and valor you grant every wish and prayer Kiye 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 abbasi The warrior like no other The one that Hussein called brother You'll be in our hearts forever Kiye 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 abbasi This is testament to what you gave that the water circles you, holy grave. If our hearts are troubled or and in pain, we look to your shrine and call your name. We look to your shrine and call your name. Mola, 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 abal fas. Mola, 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 abal fas. You were Lady Zainab's protector And you were the army's commander You stood as the standard bearer Kiye 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 abbasi You mastered the art of combat The whole of Arabia knew that No one had the skills that you had Kiye 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 abbasi When you stood against the enemies You broke through their lines with so much ease With the blood of Ali running through your veins Sacrificed your two arms for Hussein Sacrificed your two arms for Hussein Mola 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 Abal Fas Mola, 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 Abal Fas. Mola, 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 Abal Fas. Mola, 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 Abal The Holy Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his progeny, has said, Surely the month of Ramadan is a great month. Allah multiplies in it the good deeds, and erases in it the sins, and elevates in it the ranks. As we come to the end of another show, I want to leave you with a few final words. This is something I've been thinking about. And it's a, it's a saying I've heard many times before. I don't know who it's been quoted from, but it's something that really strikes a chord with me. I want to impart this saying to you because I want you to get you to think and think about 
exactly what this person in your life means to you and that is regarding mothers the saying goes the mother or a mother can take the place of so many others but no one can take the place of a mother this goes to show you that a mother's place in someone's life is so unique that no one can replace her no matter how high the station of the other person is inshallah we should use these nights to get closer to our mothers and if they've passed away for whatever reason then please pray for them pray for their souls and thirdly for those of you who don't keep in touch with your mother as much make these nights nights that you decide to change yourself nights that you decide to clean the slate nights when you become closer to your mother because there's no one that would be able to replace her once she's gone I would like to once again thank you for watching and please don't forget to send in your videos, your pictures, your blogs about where you're from, about the preparation you do for your iftar, for the preparation you do for the month of Ramadan. Once again, don't forget to join us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and on YouTube. Finally, please don't forget us in your du'as. Don't forget the rest of the Muslim ummah in your du'as, especially those that are needy, the orphans and the widows. And finally, please don't forget to pray for the reappearance of the awaited Imam alayhi salam. I wish to bid you farewell with these following words. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.